Our last activity is a brief tour of creating and using editable feature services. Earlier, we made a feature service of the historical elections data. Let's say you wanted your students to edit the data layer that you have placed online. For example, if they were in the field, they could add data to one common map that would be automatically updated or in the classroom where you ask the students to identify the countries, let's say, where their electronics they own are from, or their clothing, or the food that they ate today. Where's that from? Think of this as crowdsourcing your field work, or said in another way, this is collaborative citizen science in action. Now, out there on ArcGIS Online is a map that my colleagues and I created for a teacher professional development institute. I'm going to go ahead and open that right now. Each teacher added tree height, tree species, and condition via this ArcGIS Online map. They did so using an ArcGIS app on their smartphones while in the field, as well as a photo they took in each location. So if we look at the legend, we can see that we confined the data collection to olive trees, fruit trees, and other. This is in a location in Southern California. Let's say I wanted to change the base map, of course, to imagery. I could do that quite easily. I can see what kind of terrain we had these folks in and the different kinds of attributes on the trees. Here's one of the attachments. It's actually a fairly nerdy picture of Dr. Huen and I out there on the ridge. But these, these photos could be anything. Ideally, they'd be of the trees themselves. But the point is, is that this is an editable feature service, so these points were added while we were out in the field. This is a huge leap forward, folks. When this was editable, I had an edit button right up here where I'm pointing my mouse. I turned off the edit feature function after we were all done collecting data. You can use the same editable feature service idea to collect data when you're not in the field when people are just on their computers in their offices or in their schools or in any other setting. For example, here uh, is a map I set up for an online spatial thinking course that I taught this fall. Instead of just asking the participants to respond in a text-based way, uh, like a forum, where they were from and what they taught, I asked them to add this data into an online map. The map runs an editable feature service, just like the one we looked at with the tree height and the tree species. Here is my particular data point right here. And I have an attachment, which is our view from our ESRI office in Colorado. Nice place. I'm going to zoom out now and look at some other participants in the course. Zooming out, I had participants from all over the country in this course and I can click on each one of these folks and find out a little bit more about them. I can also, of course, symbolize the data based on the different content areas that people are teaching. So, for example, if I change the symbols, I can make, uh, how about, uh, different colors based on a year's teaching or uh, something like that, unique symbols based on the primary content area that they're teaching. And so, for example, I've got uh, these, these uh, symbols here. That's very nice. I can see the, different dis the distribution of these different folks, and I can get data about them. Now, notice, as I mentioned earlier, that I've got an edit button here. So, uh, let's go ahead and add, let's say I'm in Redlands, California. And uh, let's say I don't know where Redlands is, so I can go ahead and over here, go to Redlands, California, and there it is. Great. Now I'm going to add a feature, and let's say I teach uh, math. And I teach right here at the ESRI headquarters. So 10 years teaching, and my primary content area I can pick here, but I've already said math, so that's what it comes up with here. And Redlands Unified and uh, I'm done with that, so I'm going to say close. I'm going to go ahead and close this, and then now that's part of my data set. This is editable until I, as the content provider of this layer, turn off the editable service. Now, how did I create this? There are several steps involved. I created it in ArcMap. 
inside ArcGIS Desktop and specifically the ArcMap application. I set up, as you noticed, a couple of domains. Now don't let that term scare you off. All it means is that uh, I have set parameters so I couldn't uh, have people input whatever I said you've got to select either history or math or social studies or science or something like that and so here's my template inside ArcMap doesn't look like much here but it's very important because it's got the parameters that I've got on every one of these fields so here's my field names that I had the organization years teaching primary content area and initials gender and so on uh, well that's all I had in here and in each one of these I've actually got the parameters for what they can specify as far as the primary content area and so on so this is how I set it up time doesn't permit me to go into the details of how then you publish it out but in brief what you're going to be doing is you're going to be able to share as a service and when you publish that service it goes up into the ArcGIS online cloud and then you can say oh I want people on the other end on the web to be able to edit that service excellent very briefly under the description of the contents for this particular geo database inside ArcMap I've got a couple of domains set up for example the content area primary content there it is and these coded values are the acceptable ones science geography math etc under gender uh, that was pretty easy just two types possible so that's where I've got this stored inside the feature class properties inside the participants and I've got the properties right here so that's where that's stored and then the power comes on the other end because it's very convenient all they have to do is select that drop down menu and they've got it they've, they can select from that the nice thing also is that if they're out in the field and they're on a mobile device that maybe it's a bit difficult to to uh, select things on because there's just the physical size of the screen all they've got to do is is pull that drop down menu down and then select the the type of tree or the kind of content area that they're teaching or whatever it happens to be so you can see that these things are really quite powerful and easy to set up